Hi, I'm Dave Bull, streaming product manager at Colonial Saw Company. We are the North American importers and distributors of streaming vertical panel saws. The purpose of this video is to simply demonstrate the proper use and features of vertical panel saws, specifically a streaming compact vertical panel saw. All streaming panel saws cut both vertically and horizontally from one of two levels, either the main rollers on the bottom where the panel uh, is full size or when the panel gets cut down to a smaller size from the mid shelf or center shelf on the saw. Those are both standard features of every saw. Let's start by discussing vertical cutting which you will likely do uh, more of if you're doing typical cabinetry work. Uh, in order to cut vertically on a vertical panel saw, you can't just cut anywhere you'd like along here, otherwise you'd be cutting your support laths in, in various places. So you need to be locked into a vertical cutting station. You can identify those by where the cuts are in the, in the laths, support laths right now. In order to get to a vertical cutting station, I simply line up my red marks on the beam and on the frame that tells me that I'm over a vertical cutting station. And from there, I simply twist the tall locking bar to the right, which allows the saw head to plunge all the way in. When I am not at a vertical cutting station, if I forgot to lock myself into a vertical cutting station, the saw head is not able to plunge into the into the back and grid and I can't get the locking bar out of the way. So that's how I get to a vertical cutting station, lining up the red marks and twisting the bar over to the right. From this particular vertical cutting station, my tape measures split off in each direction, but I primarily want to use the left tape, side tape measure and I set my measuring stop along the rail, which is calibrated from this vertical cutting station. I set my measurement along the scale, lock it. At that point, I would roll my panel over to that stop and simply make the vertical cut from top to bottom. I plunge in all the way until you can't plunge anymore. There's a dead stop to the saw. Come down at the bottom of my cut. I pull the saw head back out and bring it back up. I can remove my cut part at that point and if I need to make another cut, simply move my measuring stop once again, pull my panel over, and repeat the process. At a certain point, I'm going to run out of tape measure to my left here. On the smallest compact saw, that point is at about 44 inches to the left here. On larger saws, it will be more along the lines of 83 or 84 inches. When I need something cut to length longer than those lengths, I need to unlock myself from my main cutting station on the saw, move myself down to the right, lock in at the next station, and in this case, and in most cases these days, these saws are exactly 40 inches apart from center to center. So I would simply add 40 inches to what my tape measure says here. In this case, I'm at 16 inches, so that would be a 56 inch cut from that station right there. On the small compact, I do have one more station down, which would be 80 inches added to my tape measure over here. Okay. If I have the optional digital measuring system for the machine, in that case, to add the 40 inches when I've moved the beam down, I would simply press a button here and it's going to, at that point, add 40 inches to the display. If I press it again, it will add 80 inches to the display and I don't have to do the, the math uh, that the tape measure, the pointer finger on the tape measure requires. Horizontal cutting is accomplished by pulling the saw head past the stop or the withdrawn position 
rotating the, the nicely balanced saw head over to the horizontal position, putting it back into its working range and out to the withdrawn position again. Obviously I'm going to move the beam from left to right, so I need to be unlocked from my vertical cutting station. So I twist the, the locking bar to the left. That allows my beam to move freely back and forth. I have two scales on the front of the beam that both reference from the bottom of the panel up. The, the tape measure that goes further down to the right is obviously referencing the lower reference surface, the, the rollers on the bottom. The tape measure to the left that doesn't go down as far is referencing my mid shelf or center shelf. So with my pointer fingers on the tape scale, I simply move the saw head into position, lock my saw head with the kip handle here, and again it has a similar safety uh, as the, the tall locking bar did for vertical cuts, where if I don't remember to lock the saw head or don't lock it fully, there's going to be a little device there that prevents the saw head from going all the way in. You'll, it'll go part way into the panel, but you'll notice very quickly that you're not making a full separation in the panel. So when you twist the handle completely to the right to its full lock position, now the saw head is able to bypass that, that little slide piece and go to a full depth plunge. When we do horizontal cutting, we are cutting from left to right. You will notice very quickly that the rollers on the bottom roll so easily that a 4x8 sheet can, can be rolled back and forth with two fingers. So if I don't have something stopping the panel from moving, I simply may be chasing it right off the saw. So we always come down here and kick up our little stop down here between the rollers on the right, roll the panel up to that stop, and make my cut from left to right. So I push the saw in front of me with my right hand, and that leaves my left hand to be able to tend to the piece on the top so that it doesn't bind the blade at the end here. Uh, and I'll tend to that piece depending on how large that piece on top is. If it's just a small piece, I'm just going to kind of hold it up as I as I near the end of the cut. Uh, if it's a little bit larger, maybe a, a one foot wide piece, I'll simply press hold it against the, the backing grid here. Uh, if it's a little bit wider than that, or if it's a half a sheet, we're ripping the sheet, uh, a four foot sheet right in half, where that would be a big heavy piece on top, I will simply use the wooden wedge, the hardwood wedge that comes in your tool kit, keep it in my left hip, uh, hip pocket as I'm working through the day, and if I'm smart, I will wait till I'm just past the halfway point in my cut. That way, as the saw is about to make its separation at the end of the panel, if anything, the cut tends to open itself back there on the right-hand side. Um, and I simply have one wedge in the relative middle of the board to deal with as I offload that piece from the top. Very simple, uh, simple system. There is also a, a riving knife, a splitting wedge, right behind the blade, uh, traveling in that saw kerf also to help keep uh, uh, the material from pinching on the blade. Sometimes when we're doing horizontal cutting, we will find that it's easier to take a certain dimension off the top of the panel rather than measuring from the bottom up. For example, if I wanted to take a four inch rip cut off the top of a sheet, well, off, off of the sheet in general, I certainly want to take that off the top of the sheet and not the bottom of the sheet where I would have to pull out that four inch piece after I was finished at the bottom and then you have the whole, uh, the rest of the panel wanting to come down on it. So, when I want to measure from the top down, I use the repeat rip device scale here on the right side of the carriage. It is attached to the carriage so it's going to reference the, the, the top of the panel once I have that measurement set. When I want to take a measurement off the top of the panel, I simply loosen my kip handle on my repeat rip stop, bring it down. In this case, I'm going to set it at four inches. There's four inches. Lock my kip handle. 
come back around to the front of the saw and I'll bring this stop down until it touches the top of the panel. Lock my saw head like I need to do for every horizontal cut anyway. Let the stop spring back off the panel. The roller is designed uh, so that it doesn't chip the top of the panel as you let it come off the panel. And again, make my cut from, from left to right. And that finished piece will be whatever my stop happens to be set at over here. In this case, four inches. There is another feature on the saw uh, to assist for with horizontal cuts. And on this vertical track, we can have any number of uh, repositionable stops that can be accessed for uh, dimensions that you would cut on a regular basis. Um, the, the first one that I normally suggest people set is the trim cut at the top of their sheet uh, of melamine or, or the likes. Um, we can simply move those stops and, and lock them in position with our Allen wrench that comes in the toolkit and access those stops with the spring-loaded bar right here, either from the top or from the bottom, come down on that. We still need to, once we get to that stop, we still need to lock the saw head like we would for any horizontal cut, but we've come to the same position every single time. Most people will put some sort of a label next to that stop describing uh, what it is, either a dimension or, like I say, a trim cut, uh, something like that and also the direction at which they, they, they got to that stop, whether again they, they came up to it from the bottom or came down to it from, from the top down. Um, so anytime you're doing repeat patterns, uh, a closet, uh, cutting uh, widths for closets would be a good example. You're going to make the same cuts uh, uh, several times in a row, set a series of stops, and it will lead to uh, consistency and efficiency. So in vertical cutting, we discussed that the saw needs to be locked in at a vertical cutting station in order to make a cut. So the, these four cuts, or on other machines it might be five or six, that you see right now are the only cuts that you will see uh, in, in the vertical mode. Horizontally, however, we need to be able to cut anywhere in this range and lock the saw wherever we need to to make a cut. At certain points, the saw blade is going to line up with part of my backing grid, my support wall here. So we don't want to be cutting these red strips or certainly not my, uh, my support for my small parts down here, my wood, wood area. We don't want it to be cutting it up into pieces. We don't have to worry about it though because the saw knows enough, the saw knows where those points are and it will move itself out of the way automatically. In this case, on, on, in the case of compact saws, it moves upward out of the way. It moves upward so that we don't mistakenly uh, lean something up against the saw that might be this tall, and if the grid tries to shift downward, it wants to bind on that piece that we mistakenly leaned up against the saw. And when it shifts upward, we don't, we don't have that problem anyway. Uh, but right here, for example, if I was set up to make a cut right there, the saw blade would want to cut into this red lath right here. Watch the grid as I plunge the saw head in. It simply moves itself up out of the way of the saw head and the red lath won't get cut. Same, same thing down in the wood small part support area. Almost every cut will make the grid shift to a certain point where the saw blade will always find one of the saw kerf areas here and, and shift the grid just enough uh, so that the saw blade finds that kerf and doesn't cut into the grid. It does that with a very simple, mechanical, reliable system. Uh, we can go into the details of, of how it does it, but that's not really important. The Swiss engineers figured all that out. Um, but it's, it's a very reliable system and we don't worry about cutting uh, your back support wall uh, all to pieces. Maintenance of the Strebic machines is, is really very simple and uh, uh, quite easily done in just a couple of minutes uh, each week and if you do these very simple steps the machine will work 
uh, like it is the, the day it was new um, for, for many, many years. Uh, on a regular basis, daily, we want to make sure that you just blow off and, and keep the machine generally clean of off cuts, pick any parts out that might have fallen back behind the grid, get them out so that the grid works uh, uh, properly. Once a week, we put a little motor oil on a rag, just regular 20 or 30 weight motor oil, just pour a little bit on the rag and wipe the machine surfaces that the, that the machine operates on, meaning the top rail here, we're just gonna wipe it with the, the oily rag and the three sets of machine surfaces on the beam. Uh, front and back on the left, left and right in the center, and front and back on the right hand side. We're just gonna wipe those rails clean with oil. We don't worry about the fact that dust may be attracted to an oily surface because all of the bearings, both on the top of the beam and inside the carriage, all have wipers like this that go around the bearings and scrape the dust free from the surface that they're going to ride on. And it's very, very, very smooth. And that's one of the reasons that we do oil the, the machine surfaces. Number one is to preserve them or protect them, but also so that the dust wipers or scrapers operate smoothly on those machine surfaces. They, they don't want to chatter as they go along. Uh, besides that, once a month, we're going to put one shot of grease in each of the two grease points on the saw head. We would simply wipe these gold colored ca uh, sockets out and with the grease gun that comes in your tool kit, put one shot of grease into each cup and again, that's a once a month process that lubricates the column and the, uh, the uh, linear bushings that, that, that operate on the round column that the saw goes in and out on. And that really is about it other than you just in, it, visually inspecting and making sure that the wipers are in place. There are two main ones at the top of the beam. They are, they are large copper ones on compacts. Uh, those are the two most important ones probably on the entire saw. Uh, the plastic ones on the front and, and back bearings. There is a large plastic one on the bottom beam uh, bearing that rolls back and forth. And there are copper ones, uh, six of them inside the carriage on the various bearings there. Just visually inspect them, make sure they're in place and operating properly along on, on the uh, on the machine surfaces. In order to change the saw blade on a stray big, first of all, we should cut power to the machine either with the emergency stop uh, button here or with the main switch to power on the right hand side on most machines. From here, simply loosen the door handle there. There is a safety interlock here so that even if I had forgotten to turn power off to the saw, uh, the saw will not be able to be started uh, when the door is open. Uh, the saw blade is, is, is right there. You can put the saw head at any height that's convenient for you. On the compact saws, there's a spanner wrench that goes in these two holes and a specific eight millimeter Allen wrench with a, a little knob on the end of it that is designed to go in the screw and simply loosen the, uh, the screw take it off there's the flange and you notice that there's a couple of pin holes there you just need to Carefully take the blade out. 
get a new blade uh, freshly sharpened. Make sure it's clean on both sides. Throw it back in in just the opposite manner. Keeping in mind that the, the pinholes have to align with the pins themselves. The, the pins are there because the saw has an electric motor brake that will stop the saw in four seconds or less and that will tend to want to counter rotate the, uh, the blade screw without the pinholes there. So make sure the flange is clean and again it fits over the, the pins. The screw goes back in. It's a regular right-handed thread screw and the saw blade is turning in this direction as indicated by the arrow on the shroud there for you. Uh, so make sure your teeth are are in the right direction. Doesn't matter what the what the label on the blade says. We want to put it in the correct rotation. And all we need to do is tighten it about that much because it's it's going to rotate in a self-tightening direction. So we don't want to over tighten it. Simply close the door again. Turn power back on by twisting the emergency stop button and you're back to work. Thank you for joining us for this video. Uh, if you have any questions regarding operation of a streaming saw, you can certainly ask your local dealer and they'll be able to guide you or you can always call us here at Colonial Saw at 888-777-2729.